Microsoft Copilot is regarded as the most powerful productivity tool on the planet, but that's only if you're actually using it correctly. And a little spoiler, you probably aren't. I mean, hundreds of thousands of businesses are currently using Microsoft products each and every day. And these businesses are now beginning to implement generative AI into their workflows. And unfortunately, Copilot is gonna work against you unless you begin to implement these three things. What if I told you that these three things will instantly improve your productivity? Take it from me, I work for a Microsoft partner and use Copilot literally every day to boost my workflow. And that is why I have taken the time to teach you all of the secrets in this video. If you find that Copilot is just not that effective, I promise you, I promise you that it is not your internet, it is not your computer, it's you. What you say or type out to Copilot or any other generative AI capability is what's called your prompt. And your prompt is the single biggest component in determining what Copilot says back to you. If you feel like Copilot is a waste of time, well, Copilot probably feels the same about you. <laughs> But seriously, I work full time while making weekly YouTube content. If I didn't have AI to boost my productivity, I would simply not be able to be as active as I am on the different social platforms. Obviously, Copilot and the large language models that Copilot sits on are going to get better and better over time, but in its current state, Copilot is pretty good. If you don't think so, then unfortunately you need to learn how to write better prompts so that you can begin utilizing this tool. I hope I'm not beginning to sound like a jerk because that is not the point of this video is to, to beat you down in your, your poor prompts that you write, but instead show you how you can begin utilizing Copilot better with better prompts. So how do we write better prompts? The main thing to keep in mind when writing a prompt is that you need to give Copilot everything Copilot needs. For example, you could say, write an email. This is a prompt. A better prompt would be, as a regional sales manager, write a semi-professional email for a potential lead that has a high probability of closing in my region this quarter. The company operates mainly in the widget industry, Include upbeat language and the name of the company is Contoso. Please. I mean, the difference between these prompts is clear and you don't have to say please. I just like to think if AI comes to ruin the world then at least I'm on their good side. But the second prompt is going to provide a way better output and it's going to require less manual correction, proofreading, etc to use. There are three tips that I have for writing better prompts and the first one is going to be utilizing a framework. There are different frameworks out there for writing generative AI prompts, but this is the framework that I personally try to use each and every day, and I find a lot of success with it. The framework is probably the biggest tip I can possibly give you in this video, and you know, YouTube experts would say I should probably put this one last for like retention and all that stuff, but it doesn't matter. Like This is so important, you need to know this right now. Microsoft has a framework, and they outline four main criteria, but I, in a weird way, kind of agree to disagree with their framework and personally think my framework is a little bit better and easier to use because it only includes three components. Microsoft says that your prompt should include a goal, context, the sources, and lastly, expectations. The goal is essentially what you want Copilot to do. So write you an email, build a PowerPoint deck, etc. I think you get that one, it's pretty easy. Next is context, which is gonna fill in the gaps around the goal for Copilot. Context is what's gonna be the difference between the prompt, write me an email, and write me an email to send to my boss to remind them about my PTO next week. It answers the, what is this goal for, question. The third piece that Microsoft outlines is what's called providing the sources you want Copilot to use. This is you telling Copilot where to look for the information that you want. An example they use is to focus on email and Teams chats since June. Lastly, they want you to use expectations in your prompt. Expectations is their way of saying how the output should feel. Should it feel professional or should it feel fun and upbeat? I've seen some funny expectations people use in their prompts where they ask Copilot to speak like a certain movie character, so you should try that out sometime. Like I said, these are their four, but I feel like this kind of just complicates things and is overwhelming for most people. And why I prefer this 
three-part framework more. I am not the original content creator or thought leader behind this framework. I just read it online somewhere and I think it's great and speaking from personal experience, it helps me. The first component in your framework is that your prompt needs a persona. This persona is the actor that Copilot is acting as or the person it's personifying. Typically, this is going to be yourself because you're likely using Copilot to create something for you to then use, but this could also be the movie character that you thought of just a few seconds ago. From our example prompt, this persona is outlined in the as a regional sales manager. There are similarities between these two frameworks, and I feel like this kind of begins to embody what Microsoft means in its expectations part. I just think it's easier to start off every prompt with the message, as a dot, 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 it, it just makes more sense to me. The second piece in the framework is what's called context. And if you're paying attention, this is in both frameworks, but in this one, context needs to capture who or what the copilot output is for, how you want the output presented. Do you want it in a paragraph, a table, an infographic? If it's text, what's the tone that you want copilot to have? In this framework, all of this information is context for Copilot. Context is arguably the most important factor in your prompt because even though it knows everything on the internet, you kind of need to talk to it like it's dumb. I recently heard a good example that I wanted to share. If you've ever been around young kids, you understand if you were to ask a six year old to go empty the dishwasher, they would be able to do it, but I don't know if they'd be able to do it very effectively. They would in fact take all of the dishes out of the dishwasher, but they might set the dishes on the floor or on the counter and they're definitely not putting the dishes away in the correct drawers where they're supposed to go. Now, if you tell a six year old to empty the dishwasher and put all of the dishes in the correct spot in the drawers, the bowls go here, the cups go here. I want you to sort out the silverware, you know, into spoons, forks and knives in this drawer. The likelihood of the six year old being able to actually go and do that correctly just dramatically went up. So remember, Copilot is a six year old with the ability to access all of the information on the internet. The third and most straightforward piece of this prompt framework is going to be what's called your objective or your goal of the prompt. If you remember our first bad example, only had the goal or the objective as opposed to our second one had all this other information and is going to allow copilot to be effective. So formulating a good prompt using a framework is important, but if you're feeling overwhelmed, I want to show you the next thing you can do to improve your copilot experience. See the examples I've been showing you so far has all of this information all within one message that you then send to copilot. But that doesn't have to be the case because you can utilize multi chat prompts. Multi chat prompts are just where you're outlining the persona, the context and the objective through multiple messages to the generative AI. This could be done by when you start a new copilot conversation In your first message, you can state your objective, but a little tip before you submit your prompt, you should include this sentence here. Just say, I don't want you to do this until after my next message. You can say that or something along those lines. Copilot and other generative AI tools use the context of the entire message thread in order to formulate its next response. So even though that that was a different message, a different prompt, it's going to be able to use the first message with your second message to create its final output. Your next message could then include all of the context you can possibly think of. And that way, when you're writing that second message, all you have to do is think about the context. This next contact message could include the same don't do anything yet statement and copilot will continue to wait until you give it the green light. But once you submit your final message, then copilot can take your objective from the first message and all of the context and persona information from your following yeah. messages and create one final ready to go output. If this is confusing, let me just show you how I do it right now. So I use generative AI tools to help me generate some YouTube video title ideas and write all of the YouTube video descriptions. In my prompt, I set my persona as a YouTuber that is creating a YouTube video. I then share the title of the video and a couple sentences about what the video is about or the talking points in the video. This is the context for the generative AI. Before I submit, I typically use a 
don't create the video description yet message because my next message then states how I want the description to be search engine optimized. The reason I do it this way is I find that it just produces a better video description. I don't know if breaking it out into different messages helps Copilot understand the importance of wanting it to be search engine optimized. Maybe it like brings more attention to it at the fact that it's a separate message. I don't know, that's probably a large language model discussion. But anyways, submitting my second message allows Copilot to take both of those prompts and create a video description for exactly what I need. There is something actually even easier than using multi-chat prompts, and that is gonna be the third thing in our list today. Now, I will admit this next piece is something I am personally super excited for, because it's gonna make forming prompts so much faster, especially if you wanna reuse prompts. Say you find you use the same or a similar prompt over and over again, you can set up what's called a prompt template and refer back to that prompt template. Utilizing prompt templates is the third way to boost your Copilot output, but this isn't really available currently with Copilot. Prompt templates are pre-created prompts that you can then add your context to, and this is going to reduce the time it takes to write the entire prompt. So as an example, you could have a write an email as a salesperson prompt template, and then all you would have to do is add the context of the specific lead that you want this email to be for. So Copilot then takes the context you added and the prompt template and combines it into your prompt, submits it to Copilot, Copilot uses that and then brings you back the output that you're looking for. Now, a little spoiler, these prompt templates are not currently available with Copilot. But we know that Microsoft is currently developing prompt templates because you can currently use prompt templates in the Microsoft Designer to create images. We also had the announcement of what's called Copilot Labs. Copilot Labs is a prompt library of sorts with a whole bunch of pre-made prompts that you can begin using and eventually create your own prompt templates. Prompting is tricky because Copilot kind of speaks its own language that's really confusing for a lot of people. Utilizing prompt templates can create this framework needed by the AI users and reduce the time it takes to create prompts as well as standardize the outputs of Copilot. Ultimately, boosting business. Utilizing these three things is going to dramatically boost your Copilot efficiency and increase your success rates. I guess now that I think about it, there's actually a fourth thing that you need to do. There's definitely some things that most people don't think of when utilizing Copilot that you need to be aware of. Go ahead and watch this video here to see what this is. Thank you guys so much for sticking to end the video. Consider subscribing if you love the content. My name is Griffin Lickfeld, the host of Citizen Developer, and I'm excited to connect with you guys in the next one.